Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaja here. I'm back with Reconstructing Nigeria and Nigerians. Well, I'm back to be able to give you some more principles uh, that could bring solution to how to resolve problems of our country, Nigeria, and Africa continent in general. And these principles could help build any nation, any country out there. Now, first of all, what, what we must understand is that nations are built on principles. Nations are not just built on raw materials. Nations are not just built on mineral resources. Nations are built on values, value systems. People of the nations must first of all be built up in certain values. And when those people already have those values inside them, then they, they will be motivated by those values. They will be driven by those values to build whatsoever is corresponded to what they have inside, to build the kind of country that they are already built in themselves. So, but the problem that I have with Nigeria and most of the African countries is that I don't see these mission statements. I don't see that we have a vision as a nation, not just 10 years vision, 20 years vision. I'm talking about mission statement as a nation. What is our mission statement? What do we want to achieve? What do we want to attain? You know, where are we going? What are the values that are going to bring us there? What are the steps to take? I, is everybody in the country aware of these values? Are they living by these values? Are they being taught these values? Are these values being programmed into the subconsciousness of the old people? Well, that's why today I want to talk about principles that build nations. So what are these principles that build nations? First of all, the principle that, number one principle that I want to talk about is vision purpose, vision. You know, we've got to have vision. Where is the vision of the country that we want to build, of the nation that we want to build? Where are we moving towards? You know, as Nigeria, when we were having the vision 2020-20, at least the country was aware that we are moving somewhere. Right now, you know, some people just come seven-point agenda, five-point agenda. That's no vision. Those are agenda. What about vision? What about giving the country a whole vision and direction? I have a book that is called A Visionless Life is a Meaningless Life. If a country doesn't have a vision, the country will be meaningless. The people will be living a meaningless life. So I want to encourage our governors, our leaders, our president, our you know, ministers. We need to craft a vision for the country. That's number one. Number two, freedom. Freedom for individuals, individual freedom, freedom and the right to shoot to, of choice, to choose, freedom of choice and speech, freedom for everybody to be able to attain everything they want, to be able to aspire and to be able to attain. This is any country that you see that became great today, is because they have a vision of what they are what they want to do, where they are going to. It's because they have freedom for their people. Their people could know that no matter where I was born, no matter the, the village or the house or the part of the country, I have the freedom to become everything that I want to become. So freedom is the number, the number two thing that we need to encourage in our country. Freedom of speech, freedom of choice. Those two freedom. So freedom of speech gives people to, the ability to express themselves. Um, freedom of choice, they can live anywhere they want, they can, you know, uh, do things according to the law of the land. Freedom of choice. The next uh, vision, I mean, the next principle that build great nations, and that if you see any great nation, you will see it there, is that they have this aspiration for success, aspiration for accomplishment. People who are accomplished, people who, who, who have results are encouraged. People who have their systems to spur and encourage and provoke people to aspire for greatness, to aspire, aspiration for success. So we need to support aspiration for success, for accomplishment in our country. In, our, in, in America, for example, it's called American Dream. So we need to have an, you know, a philosophy and a principle whereby everybody know that they can attain, they can aspire for success and they can attain success in this country. The next point, number four point, that the principle that built nations, that great nations have been built on, is the fact that it is the wealth and the value that they have inside, the wealth of the inner values, 
that now leads to the wealth of the external values. Nations are not great thanks to, their, uh, to the wealth that they have, to their wealth, to their raw materials. But nations are great thanks to the wealth of values and virtues that they have. It is the, you know, the people have to be having the right value systems. It is when the people have been encouraged, they have been built up in right values and virtues that they now arise to build the kind of nation that corresponds to the value that is already in them. If we have a bad country, it's because the value system that we have are bad. If they will be, it's because our people are not capable of building you know, something that they don't have. A country and the leadership of our country, we must first of all inculcate and you know, emerge our own people in the right value systems to make them to be rich, first of all rich inside, to be, to be strong in values, when they are strong and wealthy inside, then from that wealth of values, from the wealth of virtues that is inside them, they will be able to, they are already great inside, they will be able to great, I mean, build great nations and great industry and great cities as well. The next point, that nations, great people, uh, build, that helps great people to, uh, be great nations to become great, is that, they, they don't. They are not control. They, the people, people's opinion doesn't depend on uh, everybody's opinion. There is pluralism of opinion. Pluralism of opinion. That means that you know there, there is there must be competition. There must be um, opposition. So it's not. If you want to really see great nations, you see that they are op diverse of opinions, and competitions are encouraged. So it's not just one party system that is controlling everything, that you know, silences everybody. There is room for opposition. There is room for uh, basically democracy. Democracy, not the way we are practicing it in Africa, but the, the freedom to celebrate opposition and to, to entertain alternating uh, voices, alternating uh, opinions. So people celebrate, because if you are just the only one that says you know everything and you don't celebrate other people's opinion, you will never be able to get new ideas. There will be no creativity, there will be no development. Because in our culture right now, they say, oh, Omodenia, you are too young. You are just a young man. Sh you know, shut up. Uh, elders are talking here. You cannot talk. No, but if you want to build a great nation, you must be able to celebrate the you know, diverse opinions. Opinions of everybody have to be uh, res uh, respected. The number six principle upon which great nations are built is personal responsibility. I have a book that is called uh, You Are Born to Make Your Nation Great. It's about personal responsibility. You can find it and you know personal responsibility is what nations that, that make nations great. That is what determines the uh, middle class. Be why is it that we don't have middle class in our country? Because everybody is either in government or they are close to the government who are rich and the rest are poor because there is no personal responsibility that is being encouraged to the level that we could have independent uh, people that build their own wealth thanks to their own personal responsibility. The next point that makes nations great is, the ability, is their creativity, the ability to think outside the box, ability to think outside the box. So it is uh, uh, the freedom for creation. This came from Europe when Europeans taught their people that God we are created by God, and since God created us, He wants us to also be able to create like God Himself. So God is the Creator. We are created by God, which means we have the ability to create also inside of us. Creativity, diversity. Yeah. So that has to be encouraged in any country that that uh, that must be great. We must give room to diversity. We must give room to uh, innovation and to you know to creativity. And that is what, any country that you see that is great, you will see that they have those diversities, they have creativity, they have the freedom to be able to innovate and think outside of the box. And that's how they're able to develop their science, innovation, art, and everything else. The next, um, the next thing that makes great, great people great and great nations great is that they value individual rights the rights of people and their property, protection of people's rights and property is a big deal in developed world. 
you know, because people will not bring investment if their properties are not saved. People will not bring, bring investment if their lives are not saved. So the uh, sanity or sanctity of life and property is very well protected. The law protects and washes over the lives of people. The lives of people are, are important and their property. And that's why people are able to create, to work hard, and to be able to you know, build economy, build industry, because they know that they can live in safety and their properties also will be in safety. Uh, another uh, thing that, you know, another factor that helps developed countries develop is what is called critical thinking. From childhood, even if you have your children growing up in England or America, you will see that from kindergarten, they begin to teach them about critical thinking. Query everything, question everything, because life is built on uh, cause and effect. If you see anything, that is a cause. I mean, that is an effect. It means there is a cause there somewhere. So look for cause and effect. So the, 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 the principle of cause and effect, to question everything, is the principle of civilization. But in our own place, you cannot question your leaders, you cannot question your parents, you cannot question your teachers, you cannot question your pastor, you cannot question anything. But without this uh, principle of you know, critical thinking, that we will, not be, we will never be able to invent anything because it comes from that, it leads to cause, cause and effect. And we must be able to discover the cause so that we'll be able to have effect. If we do, cannot ask questions, we cannot de discover the cause. And if we do, don't discover the cause, we'll never be able to produce uh, effect. So asking questions is a key to education is a, is, and it's a key to development as well. And finally, what I want to talk about today uh, the principle that made developed countries develop is the rule of law. The rule of law, everybody is equal before the law. The president, the senators, and the ordinary citizens, they are the same. But we don't have that right now in our country. What we have right now is the rule of the powerful, the big men, is the rule of Oga at the top. But we need to make our country to be under just one thing, truth. The truth of the law, the rule of law should be supreme over everybody else. If we could follow these 10 principles and inculcate them into the mindset and the thinking faculty of our people, if from kindergarten to university level, if our people will be able to abide by these principles, know and live by them, not just to know them by heart, but to live by them, we will discover that the civilization development is a reality for Nigeria and for all of Africa. That's it for today, for the love of God, church and nation. Peace.